State Kirchhoff's second law. You gotta memorize this, okay? No shortcuts around this. Okay, so we're gonna say that the sum of EMF around a loop in a circular. So I mean like, you know, if I go in the loop like this, that's, that's a loop. One loop. So sometimes I'll go up, sometimes I'll go down in potential. There's a lot of changes, we just say the sum. Okay, and this is is equal to the, we say the sum of potential drops in the loop. In other words, you can say the sum of all potential drops is zero. Okay, depending on how you want to write it, okay? The second formula, you would write it like sum of votes equals to zero. Okay, the first one, you will say like a uh, sum of EMF equals to a sum of the potential drop specifically. So, different ways of expressing Kirchhoff's second law. Okay, what do we want in the circuit? So we got a battery, internal resistance, and then connected to a wire. So wire has resistance 0 0.9, potential difference. Ooh, let's write this down. Resistance, potential difference, current. Oh, our favorite Ohm's law. This is bonus. Is it bonus? Can it be so easy, right? Possible. Okay, let's try it. So V equals to I R. Now, you have to know what you're VIRing. A lot of people simply VIR, okay? This is a current you're trying to find. Potential drop means from one side to the other, you drop or you lose the amount of energy represented by 1.8 volts. Of course, you have a 0 0.9 resistance, okay? So let's just plug everything in. So 1.8 I and 0 0.9. So you get 2 amps. 0 0.0 amps. So if you write 2, I will say, excuse, is it 2.2? Is it 2.3? Is it 2.8? 2.0. Must remember to put your 2 SF here. Okay. So with this current, what's the number of free electrons that pass a point in the battery in a time of 45 seconds? So you need to remember that in a wire, you have all these electrons that are traveling. That's how we measure current, okay? So this is car uh, ele electric current. And we need to know the definition of what current is. Current is how much charge flow in a certain amount of time interval. So this here refers to the total charge that passes by a certain point. Okay, let's see here. Huh? So here we need to say, okay, each electron has a charge of E. So a Q of each electron is a constant E, which is 1.6 times 10, negative 19 coulomb. So each fella has that charge. Negative, huh? So let's expand a bit. So current here will now be the number of electron times each electron charge over T. Instead of Q, I'm going to put E. Okay, what is N? N here is the number of electrons that pass by a certain point. I don't know. Maybe my eye here. Ah, this is my eye. I'm watching the electrons. Okay, so this is how we get to this. So let's go. Current uh, from just now, we got 2.0 number. Don't know. E is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And in a time of 45 seconds. Okay, we should get a number of 5.6 times 10 to the 20. So remember to write that down, 5.6 times 10, 20. Number, uh, no unit. Okay, two marks here. First mark, you QIT. They give you bonus mark. Okay, second mark, final answer. Okay, resistance R. So for... Resistance, oh, R, what is R? Okay, let's look at the diagram again. So now we need to find what is this R? Okay, we got the current 
What was the current again? 2 amps. So it means whatever current is going through here is also 2 amps. How do we find R here? Hmm. Remember just now we talked about Kirchhoff loop? Maybe we can try that Kirchhoff loop. For a whole loop that travels from the battery, go one round, like this. Go in a loop. Ooh, suddenly, I think it's blue color. Yes, okay, let's try that. So, from a starting point, let's say from here, from here, okay, from here, the battery. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. Nice loop. Uh -huh. The first thing I'm gonna write, um, let's see, we're gonna use the method where we talk about the sum of EMF is the sum of potential drop. Okay, the circuit is still not too bad, so we can use this method. Okay, EMF from low to high, that's a rise in EMF, so I'm gonna say 4 on this side. Any other EMF? No more. Okay, so drops, we have the first drop down here, which is I times R, or just 1.8. Okay, so we just write here, 1.8. We have one more drop down here. Uh, this drop is, I don't know what is this, VR, I suppose. So this one, you have to calculate using I times R, VIR. So I'm going to take the current I times R. There's one more drop. Due to internal resistors. This one is V and small r. We're going to use I times R again. So we know the 2 amps and we know the resistance also. So this is going to be I times small r. Alright. So there's many ways you can write this. I'm going to do 1.8 plus I R plus R. And sub in all the values. So 1.8, 2 amps. Oh, the R again. Uh, did they give us the resistance 0 0.9? Okay, so there's 0 0.9 plus 0 0.35. Oh, wait, we forgot one more thing. Did we forget anything? Mm, let me check. Did we forget anything, right? Ah, I know already. Mm, I think I know. This R here. Sorry, sorry. This 0 0.9, we don't know why it is. Okay, okay. We don't know why it is. We are trying to find the R, confused with the others. R there. Okay, so here we find the R. We get 0 0.45. Eh, 0 0.75. Sorry. Okay, that's in ohms. Okay, so there's many methods to solve this. This is one of the methods. You can do it in one equation. So whatever equation you use, this is the first line. Depends on your method, okay? Where you sub in values. And then you get your final answer. Okay. Next, we're going to level up the circuit a bit. So now we have the resistance wire, but we add another new section here, the battery. So now this becomes a potentiometer circuit. Okay, so they say the connection P is moved along the wire. So this thing you can poke, poke, poke around. It's movable. It's not a fixed wire thing. If you do, do it in lab, then you'll get a chance to try this out. Okay, the galvanometer reading is zero. This is a very important clue right here. When dispatence XP is 0 0.3 meter, let's label that. So here to here, so let's just write here, 0 0.3. What does reading is zero mean? Hmm. So first things first, reading is zero means the potential drop across this XP is exactly the same as a potential drop across the bottom half of this uh, circuit. Okay, so I'm going to say here in VXP is the same as the EMF. Let's call this EMF number two. Right? So let's say potential is coming at. Okay, let's just pick a number. Uh, that's internal resistance, right? Let's say it's four volts. 4 volts, 4 volts, 4 volts here. No drops yet. But when you go across the P, maybe you drop to, let's say, 3 volts. Okay? You drop by 1 volt. And down there, you also drop to 3 volts. So then, if the potential here and here is the same, then there is no current flow. That's why the galvanometer reading is 0. 
Because if it's the same potential, there is no current flowing across. Nothing is higher, nothing is lower, it's just the same. Now that we know how the galvanometer works, let's clean up the circuit and solve the question a little bit here. Okay. Now, this is the same wire. Wire X, Y. So we've got to rewind a little bit. Rewind, rewind. Ah, this one. Hmm. Oh, is it again? So this is 0 0.9 ohms. 1.8 will drop. Okay, so let's write 0 0.9 ohms for the whole wire. And we know that one side will have a potential drop of 1.2 volts. So if there's no current going through the lower part here, no current, means any current that comes from the battery will only flow through the upper half of the circuit, also known as the primary circuit. So this is the same as this one just now. It's just one loop, just, just one, one circuit here. The current just flows in a loop so it's safe okay safe just don't panic about the down here there's no current down here okay so then we gotta do some ratio here now so we got a ratio of length to potential i don't know what to call this let's just call this vpy okay ratio is our best friend we want to find the length so we already know distance xp is 0 0.3 we got to find what is this length, L. A few ratios we need to set up first. Number one, a potential divider ratio across these two. So, remember we can ratio a uh, V equals to IR. If current is the same passing through both, then V is proportional to R. So, we always, oftentimes we use the potential divider and we say that V1 over V2 is R1 over R2. Or in this case, Vxp, mm, just ratio to each other, over Vpy. Oh, I see an error. Sorry, this L here, we want to find is the whole wire, the whole, the whole thing, the whole L. So let's use another color before I get confused again. Okay, here's L. Ah, so let's change the ratio a bit. We are going to ratio Vxp, one section, over V total. The whole, the whole wire. Okay, and that's related to the current, uh, sorry, the resistance R of section XP over the total resistance of the wire. And this is linked by, like we say just now, VIR. But you can do one more ratio. We do not want this resistance, right? So we can also ratio this to the length of XP to the total length which is in this case L. Why can we do this? Because this is one single wire. This is the same wire. So R equals to rho L over A. Same wire. Ding, 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 ding. And we're just doing a ratio of R against L. The rest are constant, same wire. Here is V against R. Same current. Okay, so we have two sections now. One part over the total. Okay, so we're going to use... We don't know what is this one. <laughs> we don't have enough information. So we're going to use V and L as the ratio here. So VXP here is 1.2. That's referring to this section here. Over the total. Now what's the total again? Let's go back up. Ah, here, yeah, total is 1.8 so let's put 1.8 okay let's label it here also so you know this whole thing is 1.8 volts right okay next one length so length of xp is 0 0.3 meters these are in volts over the total length Okay, so we got our ratio. Just need to know how to set it up like this. Different segments, okay? Alright, so let's put the ratio down here. 1.2, 1.8, 0 0.3, L. So L, you should get about 0 0.45. Let's write it down. Okay, 0 0.45. 
So ratio is your best friend, okay? Even for scary looking circuits. Just remember there is no current. That's a very important key of galvanometer readings here. Okay, next part. So the fixed resistor is replaced by a different fixed resistor of resistance. Greater than R. State and explain the change to mate of position P. So the galvanometer reading is now zero. Ho 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 ho. Okay, the change here, greater than R means the resistance here has increased. Now what on earth does this do? Hmm, good question. Let's look back at the balance. Huh? Remember just now here we say there's no current. When you change the resistance, you do affect the current of the overall whole circuit, primary and secondary. But remember, we always go back to the key, key main idea. What's the key main idea? What do we want? Galvanometer reading to be maintained to be zero. Okay, so our friend here is an important clue. In order for this to be zero, means, what was it again just now? VXP must be equal to the EMF of cell 2. Means if the EMF of cell 2 is 1.2 down on this side, XP here must still be 1.2 volts. No matter what. Okay. All right. So, so, so how do we change? Uh, if you have a resistance here that's going to increase, means it takes more share of the potential difference. So it takes... More potential difference. Here we will take up more votes now. What was the earlier value? Let's go all the way up. Just now we take um I don't know what the VR is here. Ah yeah, never mind. Think we calculate. So anyway, it will take more share of the potential difference here. And of course, the internal resistance will have its own share of VR. So have its own share of VR. Main point is it takes more. When you take more, means there's less for the wire itself. So maybe let's make right there as the first point. Because we need to state and explain what we're doing. The change to make on the position, right? So let's talk about the potential difference first. So first, the potential difference across x, y decreases. If you want to explain why, you can say because uh, r takes more share of the potential difference because now the resistance is bigger. Okay, so what does less potential difference mean here then? As number two. So here we look at just now the ratio, right? Vxp over Vxy total. Okay, this is related to the resistance and length. The resistance of XP related to the resistance of the whole wire is fixed, right? Let me check. Okay, yes, it's fixed. It's 0 0.9 ohm. That's kind of fixed. Okay, so put it in black. Total the resistance, and that's related to the length of XP over the total length. Okay, that one's also fixed. You can't change the length of the wire. Fixed. All right. So we need to fix VXP as 12 well, sorry, 1.2 volts. I'm going to put a box here. These are fixed. Can't really change them. What you can change though are the rest. So here, VXY is going to be decreasing. This thing. Right? So I'm going to need more length here so that I have a, a, a longer, larger resistance. Okay? So this while we can explain the second point here to talk about how the length should change. So you need a longer length. Ah. Means I need to move it a little bit to the right a little bit. Or something like this. Maybe I take this and I poke it here. Move. Ah, so now there's a longer length extension. So let's say P is on P must be moved to the right or you can say towards y. 
Now, if you want to explain a little bit more, it's not in the mask scheme, but you can say, oh, uh, this is, what, why, why do we do this? To increase the potential drop of section XP so that it matches your battery 1.2 volts. Okay, so that's how you can explain potential meters. Just remember, a very important thing to know for potential difference and galvanometers and potential meter circuit is the ratio. Ratio is your best friend. So use the ratios. Okay, I think that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.